Hi, welcome to the Game Splainer. I'm Jeff the Game Splainer, and today I'm Game Splaining Iwari. So, Iwari is a pre world game, as in, it's before civilization. So, what you are doing on your turn is you are exploring the areas that make up the map or the globe as we know it. When you explore an area, you'll put a tent into that area. These are the tents. Notice that everyone's tents are a slight different shape, but they are also a different color. You can also, once you have discovered an area, or someone has discovered an area, it doesn't have to be you, you can add pieces to the totem in the middle. Any number of colors can go on those totem. The game will last until this deck is finished. All of the discarded cards then get reshuffled into this deck again, and there's a scoring and then we play through the deck again, and there's a final scoring. So twice through that deck with two lots of scoring. Each element of scoring is important to understand, and only one of those elements will be scored on the first time through. All of the elements will get scored on the last time through. So the, the element that will be done on the first time through is scored on the number of tents in each area. So areas are divided by color, you can see there's a number of them. There's another side of the board which has a different number of coloured areas on it, just to make the game a little bit different each time you play it. The way an area is scored is looking at the number of tents that each player has in the area. So with this area here, there are three blue tents, one green and one red, which means that blue has the majority in that area. What they're going to score is a point for every tent in the area. So blue would get five points. If there are only two in the area, this green, which is the second largest number of tents in that area, would score the number of tents of the largest grouping in the area. So green would get three points in this case. Let's just push this across to an area that has slightly more spots. If that is what it looks like, blue, would be getting six points, so one point for every tent because they're the largest grouping. Green would be getting three points, so one for every tent that is in the largest group. Red would then get two points. This is a little bit of a confusing way of scoring, but it kind of makes sense once you're doing it. If that is what it looks like, so red and green are equal, both of those would get three points for what is on that number above them. If there was another colour and they had a single in here, they would get two points. So either two for the green or two for the red. And that way it will be scored across the entire board. When you get to the end of the game, you're doing that scoring again for the tents, and then you are scoring for each connection. So what that means is at the moment, do you see these numbers? You're going to score them in order. So I've only put a couple of totems in so we can kind of see this, but we'll go in order. So you would do area one first, which is this area and this area. Then you do area two, area three, etc. When you get through to it, area nine, this one has a majority of blue because there's two blue and nothing else. This one has a shared majority, blue and green, which means that blue has the majority in each area so blue will now score points for every element that is on the totem. So blue would get two here, and another two there, it would get four points total. When we score number 10, blue has majority here, but green has majority in that one, which means neither of them get any score. When we score these two, green has majority here, green has shared majority. So green would get five points, because there's three in this totem and only two in that. However, you will notice I just moved a marker off that. These are the mountain markers. Those markers are put in at the beginning of the game so you can see which areas are not going to score. So green actually gets no points because that one simply doesn't score. The number of those area markers that go in is different for each player count and they're working on these little markers of mountain size. So it's a choice of two uh, for each mountain size. So, so this one would either go here or here because they're the same mountain size, but it was chosen to go there at the beginning of the game. 
The other thing that is going to be scored is the connected area. So at the moment, green has two connected, red has none connected, so just one, and blue has two connected because there's an empty gap just here. If that was there, blue would have four connected. So you're following these roads around the board. You must have four connected for them to score. So blue would get four points. It's one point for each tent. If blue happened to have more coming out, everything connected would get scored. So blue at this point would be getting six points because there's six tents connected, whereas green and red would be getting nothing. And that's all the scoring, that's what you're working towards. So how do we get there? I'm so glad you asked. You have three cards in your hand. You must play in the same area. So you'll notice this player has two green and one red. That's this area or this area is the green and the one red is that area, that area. You can only play in one of those areas. So he might choose to play this card. So a single red would allow him to add a tent or add to the totem. If he wished to go over here, you'll notice there's no tents in that space yet. He must put a tent in. In fact, he can only put one tent into an undiscovered area. Now that area is discovered, any player is allowed to add two tents or a tent and a totem or two totems. Once he's had his go, he will then choose to pick up cards again. That then gets replaced. That gets replaced once a hand is full, it doesn't get replaced as you're going. You have the choice of the four cards that were face up or the face down top card if you wish. When it comes back around to his turn, what he can do is play that one to go in this area again. He can play these two because they're matching as a wild. So two cards of the same type can be one of any other type. So he might say these two are the mountains, so he's got two mountain cards being played. By playing two mountain cards, he has the choice of either placing in two tents, a tent and a totem, or two totems. It's entirely up to him which one he goes for, and then he would replace his hand from the face up cards or the face down, top face down card. Once he's replaced his hand, then the new set of four gets put out. And that, in reality, is the game. There are some extra things, some extra elements that can be added, but what we've just got to is the base game. The extra elements are these. So what they do, and you can choose to use some of them, all of them, or none of them. Let's deal with this one first. This one's called the Union. There are two of these in the game. So the first person and the second person who achieves the feat is able to add that marker. What is the feat that this one's looking for? It's looking for four of the same tent type to be all joined together. So he would add that marker on there. The next person who achieves the settlement, so he gets four tent types together, would add the second one. Then there's this one, which is the discovery. The discovery will get taken when someone covers the last tent space. So he's covered the last tent space, he places a discovery. Notice that discovery can be placed anywhere on the map except for the area where the last tent space was placed. These feats are a multiplier, which means that anyone who is scoring with them would get a multiplier. If they only had one feat just there, when they scored the tents, they'll get a multiplier of two. With two there, they'll actually get a multiplier of three. If you're able to get another multiplier in, that would give them a multiplier of four, and if you get this one in, that would get a multiplier of five. The other two multipliers are talking about the totem. This one, which is honor, only the first player to have a totem majority, which is, in essence, is actually that, because he's the first player with a total majority, but it must be a total majority on two land spaces. From here to here doesn't count, from here to here does count. So if blue would put that on next, blue now has a totem majority. That one can get placed on top of the totem. 
It doesn't specifically say in the rules, but I've got to assume that that actually stops people from adding to the totem. The other one is the respect mark, which is also a totem one, which is for someone who has a totem majority across water, which is these ones. So if, for example, Green were to put that in there, he now has that totem majority number 12, which is across water, because he's got majority here and majority there. He would then put that in. And that would also give the multiplier once you get to the scoring. So when you score these two, that should give a three multiplier. When you score this one and this one, if he wins, he would get a two multiplier. And that is everything for Iwari. Please go ahead and watch my game's play to get a feel for how the game actually plays. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you would like to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up to date with the games that I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.